Hello once again my friends. Today we'll be discussing the oldest form of technical analysis in the world. Japanese candlesticks. Munahisa Homa is credited with developing Japanese candlesticks in 17th century Japan. He's said to have studied and analyzed the price patterns, weather conditions and trader psychology of the preceding 10 years before starting to trade. And he's said to have made over 100 successful trades on the trot. He retired a rich man and went on to write the world's first two books on technical analysis. The ancients have long taught us that by studying the past, we can learn about the future. And Homer put this wisdom into practice. He then went even further by passing his knowledge and experience down to us. The principles of trading developed by Homer, who we could call the world's first market guru, go by the name of Japanese candlesticks. This is also the name of the type of chart used to record price. Japanese candlestick charting and analysis were introduced to the West in 1985 and the charting method quickly became popular. But before going any further, I'd like to quickly run through the basic elements of Japanese candlesticks. The candlestick is basically a rectangle with the open price and the closed price at either end. The high price and low price are attached to the rectangle with vertical lines. The rectangle is called the candlestick body or sometimes real body and the vertical lines are known as the shadows, wicks or hairs. If close is greater than open, it means that price has risen over the period and the candlestick has a white body. If close is lower than open, it tells us that price has fallen over the period and the candlestick is black. This color change makes the candlestick chart more immediate and easier to interpret than the traditional Western bar chart. Sometimes the candlestick does not have any shadows. These are known as marabotsu candlesticks. We shall be discussing the implications of different types of candlestick throughout this film. Many people feel that candlesticks are more aesthetically pleasing and of course the West has had an enduring fascination for all things Eastern. The very names of the patterns, for example, the Morning Star, Dark Cloud Cover and the Dragonfly Doji are evocative and have a sort of mystical romance. And from an economic point of view, the fact that the Japanese nation became an economic superpower not once, but twice in the 20th century, suggests there's a lot to be learned from the Japanese way of looking at things. As we mentioned in Chart Analysis 1, although Japanese candlesticks and bars were developed in complete isolation from each other, both charting methods use the same four key prices as the basis of their construction. These key prices are, of course, the high, low, open and close. The similarities do not end there and we'll be discussing a number as we consider some of the simple and not so simple combinations of Japanese candlesticks. You'll often come across the terms long and short candlesticks. These terms have nothing to do with going long or short. They are, in fact, 
more simply connected to the length of the candlestick. It begs the question, how long is a long candlestick? If that sounds like a bit of a conundrum, don't be alarmed. As is so often the case, the answer here is, it's all relative. Generally speaking, the length of the candlestick is the difference between the high and low. The length of the candlestick we're interested in is compared to the length of the average candlestick. Some writers suggest averaging the length of the candlestick either for the last 5 or 10 periods. Others go further and advise using rumours to write a new indicator which gives the SMA of candle length over a natural cycle. For example, for daily candlesticks you could average over 22 days, which is the trading month, or 65 days, which is a quarter. Personally, I let my eye be the judge. And if a candlestick looks longer than the average, it's long. And if it looks shorter than the average, it's short. Of course, you need to take care when working with intraday candles. Please bear in mind that the opening and closing of the major exchanges around the world distort candlestick length and make any comparative analysis hazardous. You must always take the time of day and the currency pair that you're working on into account. But the main features of Japanese candlesticks, the information that they carry and the signals they give off hold as true for intraday charts as they do for daily charts and beyond. When we look at a candle, the two most obvious prices are the open and the close. This is not accidental. Japanese candlestick analysis says that these are the two most emotional times of the trading day, the times most governed by fear and greed. If you have an interest in the stock market, you'll have most probably heard of the January barometer. This tells us that how the S&P 500 does in the first few weeks gives us a reliable indication of the direction of the market for the year as a whole. When Japanese candlesticks were being developed, Japan had a very martial culture. It was natural for them to see the trading day as a battleground between the forces of buyers and sellers and the opening positions and shots in any battle can be of vital significance. Likewise, at the end of the trading day, pressure forces the hand of many traders. They might be thinking of targets that must be met or the danger of missing opportunities. Now, these considerations hold true for the majority of exchanges, but of course, on Forex, we've got 24 hour trading. The world spins round, exchanges start trading and others stop for the day. Openings merge into closings, which in turn merge into fresh openings. It's all very zen. It's difficult to know where the beginnings and the ends are. The only things we can say for sure on a Forex market are that we must take all four key prices into consideration and we can only be certain of a candlestick's length and colour only after it has been formed. Let's get on to the candlesticks themselves. We'll start by taking a look at the doji. This means unskillfully made. Unskillfully because they don't have a body, merely a horizontal line. We get doji when the open price and the close price are equal. This is usually taken as a sign that the bulls and the bears are well matched and their meeting resulted in a draw in this period. Doji signal indecision. Prices closed where they opened, on as even. Let's take a closer look at the conditions that form the doji. 
Let's say that price grows after the open. What we see forming here is known as a morobotsu, which means shaven, because it doesn't have any shadows. The bulls seem to be gaining the upper hand, but then the bears counter-attack, price falls and the candlestick body turns black. What we can see now is called the inverted hammer or the shooting star. But finally, the bear's counter-attack fades, price is rise once more and at the end of the period, price closes at the same or almost the same level at which it opened. Voila! The doji. This type is known as the long-legged doji or the rickshaw man. Skilled traders understand the doji to mean caution. It signals uncertainty. It's time to consider closing any open positions. The doji is especially significant if you believe you're at the top or the bottom of the market. The rickshaw's man's crossbar is always roughly central. The candle should be long. Remember, the rickshaw man merely means indecision and the trend could reverse, could go into a range or who knows. If you get a doji at the top of the market that looks like the top half of the rickshaw, you've got a stronger signal of indecision. This doji is the consequence of a draw too, but it forms when the only price push of the period was bullish. As this doji is found on an uptrend, it means that for a number of days in succession, the bulls had the upper hand. Only this time, they attacked, but the ground they gained in their charge was cancelled out by a bearish counter move. This doji is known as the gravestone. It was named in the days when traders could only make money on a rise in prices and it buried all hope for future profit. At the bottom of the market we can find inverted gravestones. They go by the name of the dragonfly, a symbol of the promise of summer and easy living. The dragonfly signals the reverse of a downtrend. Prices may well take flight up and away in a beautiful flash of jewel-like colour. The signal gains force if more than one doji occurs on strong support levels or channel lines, resistance levels or trend lines. But my friends, fools rush in and it's not a bad idea to wait for further confirmation. In this case, we get a couple of hammers, more of hammers later and a strong move up and it's time to get stuck in and make some money. The beauty of Japanese candlesticks is that one single candle has the potential to predict future price action for days or even weeks ahead. We can look for perfection all our lives, but all we will ever get is an amazing variety of imperfections. It's very easy to say that the closing price will be equal to the opening price, but it's easier said than seen. I'd rather have a flawed diamond than the perfect pebble, and we have to accept reality, warts and all. So be ready for deviations from the doji ideal. I accept a candlestick with a body 10% of its height from high to low. For example, this one, or this one, and there's another. The colour of the body is of little account with these deviant dojis. Just remember the saying fools rush in applies to all doji, ideal and deviant. Always look for confirmation of the signal. We'll look at some other deviants of Rickshaw Man, the Dragonfly and the Gravestone in a bit. But first, a word of caution. People often wrongly assume 
that the word reversal implies that the old trend is coming to a rapid end and price will immediately charge off in the opposite direction, forming a new trend. But of course, it ain't necessarily so. In fact, that happens pretty rarely. Our traders are standing at the crossroads. Reversal signals point to indecision and you can never be too sure which way price will move next. The first thing to remember is that a complete trend turnaround usually occurs gradually, step by step, as the psychological state of the market changes. A reversal signal tells us there's a question mark over the future direction of price, but which way will it move? That is the question. Let's take a look at some reversals at the top of an uptrend. Here, the uptrend ends and prices drift for a while before a downtrend begins. And here, we see that after stalling in a range for a while, the prior uptrend resumes. And here, the uptrend sharply reverses into a downtrend. All the signal can tell us for certain is that the trend is under stress and we should close our positions on the trend and take our profit. Here are the other deviant dojis I mentioned earlier. They are also reversal signals, of course. If the doji crossbar is in the top third of a long candlestick that is at the bottom of the market, it's a signal for the end of the bear trend. It's a deviant dragonfly. Conversely, if the crossbar is in the lower third of a long candlestick at the top of the market, you've got a deviant gravestone on your hands and the bullish trend is under stress. But the bottom line with all reversal signals, doji included, is that you should always seek confirmation from other signals before opening a new position. If a bearish doji is at the top of a bullish market, we know that this means indecision, steady. It's too early to short on this signal. Close your longs, square your positions, take your profit. This same signal would, however, be a good basis to go short on a bear market, especially if the doji was retesting a resistance level or the trend line. The majority of Japanese candlestick signals are reversals, and here are two more, the hammer and the hanging man. These are one candlestick patterns too. They have long lower shadows and small bodies, which are in the upper third of the price range. Surprisingly, it doesn't matter whether the candles are black or white. When you find one on a downtrend, it's signaling that the trend's life is near to an end and the candlestick is called a hammer. A similar candle on an uptrend signals the end of that trend and once again a reversal signal for an uptrend has a sinister name. It's called the hanging man and indeed it promises anything but good for the life of said trend. The hammer and the hanging man have three identifying features. One, the body is in the upper third of the price range. Two, the lower shadow is twice the length of the body. And three, the candle doesn't have an upper shadow or the shadow is very short. 
you'll have noticed that hammers and hanging men are very similar to doji. The main difference is that the hammer and the hanging man have bodies, albeit small bodies, they are bodies nevertheless. What we want are long lower shadows, short upper shadows and small bodies. Though the bodies can either be black or white, a white hammer body tells us that during the period prices fell, but then a revival began with price closing near the high. It says that the bull enthusiasm is strengthening. A black hanging man says that the closing price could not return to the opening price level. The long lower shadow illustrates the bull's nervousness. Altogether, it points to the strengthening of the bears. Mark my words now, it's especially important to wait for further bearish confirmation when you have a hanging man on your hands. Just imagine the situation. The market is crackling with bullish energy. The next period opens at the previous high or near to it. Then price falls dramatically. Then it rises again and closes somewhere in the top third of the period range. There's your hanging man. The candlestick alone is insufficient to make it a reversal signal. Nevertheless, we can take it as a wake-up call. If the next candle opens below the hanging man's body, those who had bought within the body of the hanging man would be left exposed and in danger of finding themselves in a far worse position. A gap is the traditional confirmation of the hanging man's reversal signal and the wider the gap, the more emphatic the confirmation. Of course, we know that price gaps are less frequent on the Forex market than they are on the commodities and equities markets. And for Forex, an alternative bearish confirmation is that the candlestick following the hanging man is black, with price maxing and closing lower than the hanging man's max and close. Another confirmation is when a gravestone follows immediately on from our virtual execution. An apt ending no doubt, but also a final death knell for the trend. If a white candlestick follows on from the hanging man, then basically what happens next is anyone's guess. The signal has failed, and you can only wait for fresh signals, which could as easily be bullish as bearish. The hammer should also be confirmed, with bullish confirmation this time of course. So what you're waiting for is a white candlestick or maybe a dragonfly to confirm the signal. However, the hammer has more potency than the hanging man. So if a black candlestick follows the hammer but has a higher low than the hammer low, we can accept the low of the hammer as the probable low for the whole bearish movement. Nevertheless, I wouldn't act on a hammer until I got one of those further bullish confirmations. Japanese candlesticks, like other forms of chart analysis, are observation-based rather than rule-based. The hammer and the hanging man don't have to be perfectly proportioned. Just remember, the longer the lower shadow is, the more potent the signal.